How you doing, people? Today we're taking a quick look at Transformers 1, directed by Josh Cooley and starring the voice talents of Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Henry. This is a Transformers origin story and takes place when Optimus Prime and Megatron were known as Orion Pax and D-16. They were mining robots and, oddly enough, the best of friends. Spoiler alert, that doesn't last. Once upon a time, the Transformers' primary energy source, Energon, flowed freely across Cybertron. But after the war with the Quintessons, the matrix of leadership was lost, and since then, the Energon no longer flows. Nearly all of the Primes were killed in the war, and the only one remaining is the current leader of Cybertron, Sentinel Prime. And a bunch of low-level, non-transforming robots are mining Energon from the depths of Cybertron to keep everything running. Orion, Pax, and D-16 want more than a life of endless mining, and they finally escape to the surface, along with Elita-1 and their new... friend? B-127. But when they reach the surface, they find something they did not expect. We have not had an actual, honest-to-god Transformers movie since 1986, and it is about damn time. Personally, I couldn't care less about the humans. Just tell me a story about the friggin' robots fighting. Thank you very much. Transformers 1 was apparently at least in an early concept stage way back in 2015, and almost a decade later, we finally have the movie, and it's actually pretty good. This movie had some interesting ideas that I personally have not seen before with the Transformers franchise. Now, I should point out, I am not as familiar with some of the more recent cartoons and comics, so it is entirely possible I'm going to mention one of these ideas and someone will say, hey, that's not new. Just keep in mind, it is new to me. So please bear with me because I am old. Prior to this movie, I don't think I've ever seen a look at the relationship between Optimus Prime and Megatron before they were trying to tear each other's heads off. Nor have I seen Transformers who could not transform, which is actually a big plot point. And unlike previous versions of Cybertron that I've seen, this one, the civilization is entirely underground, and the surface of the planet is this hazardous wasteland that actually has some organic life. The relationship between Orion Pax and D-16 was very well done. It was interesting to see these two at a time when they actually liked each other. And of course, it can't last. We know D-16 is eventually going to become Megatron and turn to the dark side. And the way we see that play out feels very organic. Hmm. I'm not sure if I should be using the word organic to describe the Transformers, but nevertheless. And he becomes my favorite type of villain, where you do not necessarily agree with his methods, but damn it, the dude has a point. Hemsworth and Henry do a very good job with these roles and play off each other very well. They really do sound like best friends, and Orion's optimism really shines through, as does D-16's resentment about his lot in life. I did think it was a little weird that most of the robots have names, but every once in a while you encounter one that's just a letter and a number. Like, you two aren't good enough to have names. You're D-16 and B-127. Like, what? And it's definitely not a class thing, because Orion Pax is on the same level, and he has a name. I like Scarlett Johansson as Alita One, who starts out as Orion and D's boss, and apparently they have a tendency to screw things up, and she is so done with their shit. She very much just wants to keep her head down and do her job, because that is the best way to eventually work her way out of the mines. She thinks. Keegan-Michael Key was very funny as B-127, the future Bumblebee, although I don't believe he is ever referred to by that name in the movie. Though he does like to refer to himself as Badassatron. But no one else calls him that. He becomes Orion's and D's sidekick of sorts, which they are initially not very enthused about, and he does a very good job of walking that fine line where he is annoying to the characters, but not to the audience. I've actually been impressed with Key's work lately. He's turned into a very good voice actor. The animation was done by ILM, and I thought they did a fantastic job. Everything in the upper levels of Cybertron looks very bright and colorful, very much like you would expect a futuristic robot city to look. This is contrasted with the darkness of the mining levels and the mostly desert landscape of the surface. The robots all have their own unique designs. They look great. You can actually tell them apart. Uh, one of the villains really stood out, Arachnid. Uh, she was super creepy. Too many legs, way too many eyes. The action sequences were great, they're fast-paced, and a lot of fun to watch. And I did elect to go for the 3D this time around, which I have not done for a while. I actually think it's worth it for this one. I did appreciate all of the Easter eggs they threw into this movie. There are several Transformer names I recognized, apart from the main characters. There are some references to the original movie. There's a point where Elita says to Orion, You have neither the touch nor the power. 
And I believe she also once referred to a couple of the Transformers as GoBots, which was not a reference I was expecting. And B-127 has a few robots he built himself, and one of them is named A.A. Tron. I was not expecting a Key and Peele reference in this movie, but that, that was great. Overall, I had a lot of fun watching this, and so did my inner child. They did some interesting things with these characters, voice acting was great, the action sequences were fantastic. Highly recommend it for Transformers fans. And if the kids in my theater were any indication, you should definitely take your kids, they will eat this up. And that's all I have to say about Transformers 1. Till all are one, take care.